straight up chilling, yep. bruh. Yeah, bruh. Bruh. Yeah, bruh. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome to Literary Lushes with your host, Samantha and Megan. And today we are talking about the book Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. The, the book, not the show, but we will eventually talk about the show. But right now we're talking about the book. Yeah, well, like, you know, the show's based off the book. We're going to we're going to warm up the oven with the book and then we'll get to the show as like, you know, sounds good. So our drink that we did, um, the decisions, first drink decisions. <laughs> The first drink we did was the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, which included four main men drinks. And when we say men, the drinks are men named. Male named, men named. Anyways, so we Man had- muffin named? Yeah. So we had Jim Bean, Jack Daniels, Jose, and Johnny Walker. Yeah. And then also had some pineapple and lime juice in it. And a little bit of simple syrup. And a little bit of syrup. A lot of simple syrup. A lot of simple syrup. Um, The drink's really strong, really good. Uh, And then for our Patreon exclusive members, uh, we did a true for Horseman Apocalypse shot. It was rough. It it was super rough. And Mm -hmm. if you are not a patron, you'll go. You'll want to go to Patreon.com and sign up because it is well worth just probably to watch us take that shot. We have not taken shots in a long time. We're too old for that crap. And a really um, long time. Holy shit. So if you're wondering why Sam's struggling, <laughs> I'd like to blame it on the shot. <laughs> yes. So that's our drink. Um, and 30 second recap. Uh, this is a good start. Yep. <clears throat> Crowley. Crowley. It, it Crowley. Can be either way. Yes. Um, you know, demon from hell. Doing Satan's work. Just a good old boy, you know. And Azarafel, Mm -hmm. angel from heaven, doing God's work. Also good old boy. They've been frenemies for millennia. Uh, Nope, nope, nope. Well, I guess. Right? Frenemies? I thought it was like six. Not millennia, yeah. They they have Since Adam and Eve, yeah. But they have like an exact number. Hold on. Exact, exact. You keep going with your thing. I'll find the exact number. And it's more or less, you know, present day. And how wants the apocalypse or both sides want the apocalypse to happen to basically go to war. And Crowley and his RFL decide that they essentially need to team up together, put their differences aside and stop the apocalypse from happening. And the key to all of this is finding the Antichrist, which is a young boy who doesn't know he's the Antichrist. And, you know, there might have been a couple mix-ups along the way, and British humor ensues, and the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse make an appearance um, as a biker gang. And I think I think I covered all the bases. Okay, good, because I wasn't listening. Oh. <laughs> so I can't check Four you. Horsemen as a biker gang. Yep. British humor. Yep. Apocalypse. Yes. Antichrist who doesn't know he's an Antichrist. Yes. And the two angels trying to make him good and make him evil so that they can stop the apocalypse because they're both an angel and a demon who love Earth. Mm -hmm. And they go against... They don't want to go back to the underworld and the upper world. They want to stay in the middle world. Yep. Middle Earth, if you will. And they said it was created in 4004 B.C. So whatever that is. I don't know either if that is. Anyways. Millennia. A thousand years, right? Just a thousand years. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, I guess I was I'm going to take another drink of my Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse and continue to sweat. This is is great. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I loved this book. Oh my gosh, I loved it so much. Um, I saw the TV show first and then read-ish the book i i pretty much just listened to it i bought it on audiobook still counts as reading it yeah because yeah. um i had a lot of packing to do i had a lot of cleaning to do a lot of driving i had to do in the past week so i figured the best option for me to actually get this done because it's a little longer of a book just a little bit so i listened to it and i have to say 
It is by far the best audio book I have ever listened to. Um, the gentleman, Martin something. <laughs> Martin. Um, did an excellent job. He did voices. There's music involved. Like, it was very, very entertaining. Um, the book was great. I loved it. I would I definitely be loud. reading a good. Yeah, I'll be reading it again. It was it was awesome. Um, a lot of the, and the subtle humor, like I love that British subtle humor. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people I know don't really like it, and I think it's because one of those things where it's if you're not paying attention, you're gonna you're completely miss it. miss it. But there were so many things that was just was like great. so funny, and you're just like, did I read that correctly? And then I would go back and reread it and be like, oh yes, absolutely. Like how Crowley Crowley was Crawley. Yeah. And then was like, nah, I'm changing it. Yeah. <laughs> and then someone even was like, what's his name now up here? Like, what's he calling himself mm-hmm. up here? And then the plants, talking to the plants. Oh, oh my gosh, oh, hilarious. That was one of my favorite scenes. He's like, I think somebody was, he listened, or he read a magazine that was talking about how your plants will grow if you talk to them. And he's <laughs> like, oh, that makes sense. And so he goes and he gets all these plants. And then once, a, I think it's once a month, he'll go and he'll find the the crappiest looking plant and he'll pick it up and he'll show the others. And he goes, see what happens when you don't, you know, like, I'm horribly and then like, butchering this. But and then, then he like, like throws like, throw it away, away and the plants would the, like quiver. <laughs> but then he keeps the pot that the plant was in sitting there. So it reminds all the plants that there were. What not to do. What not to do. And so they were like the best, tallest, oh strongest. My God. Beautiful, most beautiful plants because of this, but they were also the most frightened yes. plants. And I was like, that's hysterical. And the whole like witch finder outfit oh. and how, what's his name? He like basically like doctored the books to make it look like he had like hundreds of Oh agents. yeah, and he, and he was going around naming, like he'd take names like pots and salt and pepper. Yeah. Like he's picking things out of his house and naming oh them. That's the, and then he's like, and then I, because at first he had real names and then he's like, then he just started getting lazy just and just lazy. naming things. Plate. Mr. Plates or something like sergeant, that. Sergeant. Witch finder sergeant. Oh, it was great. Bidet. <laughs> it was awesome. So much. Yeah. And the nuns. What was it? The nuns of. The talking, the something, something talking nuns. Oh my gosh. The nuns of like perpetual chattering or something yes. like that. Yeah, I laughed. That story was great. That was so funny. Everything about this was just, oh, Sister Mary Loquacious. That was, like, hilarious. And when you find out they're actually Satanists. Oh, it was great. I I was like, that's, I keep saying, that was great. That was great. great. That was great. That was great. It was. It was a very highly entertaining book. Um, I always like a twist on good versus bad, dark versus light, angels versus demons, the apocalypse. And spoiler alert, if you have not read the book or seen the thing, I liked at the end when they were in the park with the ducks and they were discussing things. And he was like, oh, well, how do we know that this isn't the, and I can't say this word, ineffinum plan? Ineffinum? Ineffable? Yeah, that plan. And Oh, yeah, the ineffable the, plan, obviously. And they course. go, how do we know that what we did wasn't part of that plan? And Aziraphale's like, no, wait. What? <laughs> and, and, and then and then a guy like a, a bench over like cause they're like maybe this is the and he goes ineffable and they were like yeah ineffable plan and like they didn't really pay attention to him and then he gets up and leaves and i'm like oh, is that like who was planning everything like maybe. yeah and that was funny too that the whole time they're like well, it's then they part forgot of the, all about it yeah and then they're like it's part of the ineffable plan and everybody just goes along with it without actually mm-hmm. knowing what it is and it's like God, that happens like at my job all the time. It's like, well, this is just part of the plan. I'm like, what fucking plan are you talking Can about? Can we see this big plan? Yeah, what are you talking about? And I do like how they were always so. Azarafel's and, and Crowley's relationship reminds me of um, Dwight and Jim from The Office. Yes, you can, you have to, you, if you don't have one, you can't. You can't the other the one's other. not anything. Mm-hmm. Like if you don't have Jim there bugging Dwight, Dwight's just. Just weirdo. Just a weirdo who sits there and focuses at work. If you don't have Dwight going back at Jim, Jim's just a guy who's bored at work. Like, yeah, it, same. It's, and which actually Adam brought up mm-hmm. when he was when they were talking about. Actually, I don't think it was Adam that brought it up, but he ended up like, "You're right. It was one of them." And uh, capital T. Yes, capital T. And he's like, "Well, if you got rid of this group." 
which the greasers, I think, is what they were. Uh, I, I think it was. And he's like, if you get rid of them, then we have no one to fight against. And without that, then we're just, then we're going to end up pinning, you know, we're going to have to split in half and it'll be you and Pepper and me and um, whomever. And he's like, and we're going to fight against each other and that's no fun. And so then Adam's like, you're right. And then Adam said that about to heaven and hell, like, you know, you guys are going to do this fight and whether someone wins or loses, you're going to just fight again. Right. It, it doesn't matter. And it's I was just like a nice cycle. Yeah. yeah. He's like, you'll just go somewhere else or you'll just do something or you'll start it all over just to see. Cause without, if one, he's like, and no one will actually ever really win because if someone really did and then like heaven was gone or hell was gone, it would be very boring and you wouldn't know what to do with yourself. And I thought that was super interesting because I saw that theme. Mm -hmm. If there was a theme in that book, I swear that was it. You always Probably. needed the two sides. Oh, yeah. The witch finder and the Jezebel. You needed that. <laughs> you needed heaven and hell. You needed two Therefore sides of the same coin. Yes, point. you needed yep. the good and the evil. Be and there, it's just like the um, yin and yang. You need them. They And hell, speaking of yin and yang, definitely Crowley and Azarephel. They each had like a little good and a little bad. And, and like it was, their bromance is the best. Oh, my God. It was so great. So great. With like. And I think the casting choice that they did for the show like, was spot on. Like when I, because I again watched the show first, and then when I was reading the book, I thought it would be a bit different because most of the time it right. is. But I was, or listening to the book, whatever, and I'm like, oh my god, it was pretty much like I, I for like certain words that Crowley would say, I was like, oh my god, I thought, um, and my mind's going blank. Oh my god. What's his name? The guy that plays Crowley in the show, David Tennant. De David David Tennant. Um, I thought he kind of improvised a little bit in the show, or they wrote the script for him. And then when I was reading the book, I'm like, if you wouldn't have known any better, because like that's how he talks. Like when I'm reading interviews, like everything, like oh boy, you know, like that's him. And I was just like amazed at how well they cast. Like, because if I had read the book, I probably would have been like, that's who you need, because it was just. It was great. And, yeah. Um, yeah, and I thought Michael Sheen did a great job oh, also. Same thing. Exact same thing. Like, you can hear him going, mm-hmm, <gasps> mm-hmm. Just, you, you, and I was just like, this is great. This is awesome. There's the great again. This is it's great. great. It's great. It's great. It's okay. It's great. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I read the book first, and then I watched it. And so, at first, I was like, oh, really? Like, Michael Sheen and David Tennant, right? Because when you read the book, you have, like, a whole picture in your mm -hmm. mind. And I didn't have, like, fully fleshed out characters per se. Okay. Um, but I also think the fact that there's a Crowley and Supernatural probably didn't help. Probably not. I think that's where I struggled when I started watching the show. Mm -hmm. So it's probably the same thing. Because first off, they pronounce it differently. And the guy who plays Crowley and Supernatural does a great job. He does. Even though, like, they're completely separate characters – but they're both demons from hell. They Who both are good like and evil. And they kind of like the human world a bit. Right. Same name. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> Pronounced a little Cro differently. Crowley. Crowley. Um, so I can see where you're saying that. But, yeah. But so the, when I was reading the book, I couldn't help but insert him into my picture. But I could, but I could also not concede the actor, um, Shepard. Mark Shepard? No. Is it Mark Shepard? Is his name? The so, guy that plays... Um, in Supernatural? In Supernatural. Um, I couldn't imagine him going, oh, pfft, you know, pop or whatever. You know, like, there was a lot of things. Or singing Queen. Mark Shepard, yeah. I couldn't imagine him, you know, grin, like, gritting his teeth and singing Queen while driving. No, definitely not. But, you know, just because. That's who you that's, imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I was a little bit skeptical at first. And then as I started watching it, I was like, nope, this is absolutely perfect casting. Yeah. That's um, great. Yeah, I was. There's my. It's great. Okay, it's I'm gonna. Great. I'm gonna drink every time I say that. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to Uber you home again. <laughs> um, and Uber I also, Mike. I also liked how they introduced each of the four horsemen, and yes. how um, Famine had this great, uh, like starve people scheme. Mm -hmm. That I found absolutely hysterical. Where, where it's like they give them food. To help them lose weight because it has no nutritional value it has no nutrition yeah. but then they die because it has 
no nutritional, no nutritional value. value. And then the people who want you didn't care about losing weight or who were needed to gain weight or whatever, they gave so much shit to them that mm-hmm. it gave them heart attack. Like yeah. I was like, I actually was like looking at it and I'm like, oh my god, is this what we're actually currently doing in, in America right yeah, now? Basically. Like, if you go on these insane diets, I'd probably give them nothing, like these keto diets and. Atkins right. diet or and, back in like what was it the 70s the diet pills that had the tapeworms in them did not know that was really? a thing yeah it was like a crazy diet fad with like these these diet pills and it would have like a tapeworm so you would take the pill and then there'd be a fucking tapeworm in your intestines and no wonder why you were losing weight huh mm-hmm. speaking of we're going to be doing a patreon only workout video at some point in time probably early summer yeah. Um, so uh, we'll post little, you know, a little shout out when that goes up and you guys will definitely want to see that because it'll be centered around drinking, obviously. Yes. Um, yes. I'm real excited for it. <laughs> oh, God. Who would have filmed that? Mike? Mike or Ray, I guess. Okay. Or if you really want to fucking be a glutton for torture, I could ask my trainer, my real life trainer. No, to no. Win. No, no, no. No, no, no. Because he'd be like, wait, why are you mixing alcohol with this? <laughs> I feel like your trainer would take one look at me and be like, she's a bad influence. I'm going to need you to cut her out. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, also, uh, Meg and I were talking about this beforehand. But this is our 13th episode. And what better book to cover on our 13th episode, but Good Omens? I think it. I, we, we totally did that on purpose. Shh. I mean, we were really put together, so. Yeah. Um, I also really liked the biker gang who kind of starts following. Oh, my gosh. It was hysterical. And then they're trying to come up with names. Their names. Oh, it And it just great. keeps changing as the book goes on. As they're like, that's actually, like, not really a good name. I'm going to come up with a or, one. Or, you know what I hate? I hate this. And then yeah. so they changed the name to that. And um, it was it was funny. And then they were like, because, oh, and then he was like, well, what are we? And he's like, what do you mean, what are you? And he's like, well, those are the four, you hear about them in the, and then of course they crash because they're not the horsemen. And he goes, well, now we know why we're not in the the stories. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, like, I, and then I couldn't figure out what their purpose was, like why the um, four horsemen were like, yeah, you can ride with us. So I don't know if that was just something I missed or. Um, I think it was maybe just. Yeah, sure. You can ride with us kind of thing like it doesn't matter what you do um what about agnes nutter i love her i absolutely love her i think she's epic and awesome and and the whole like how the story kind of comes full circle at the very end Mm -hmm. yeah with her great 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 et cetera et cetera et cetera Um, which I forgot how to pronounce her name. Uh, if I see it, I can probably remember it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Anithema? No, nope. Uh, nope. Uh, I have to look at it because I, I listened to it, so I heard them saying it. Anathema? Anathema. 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 That's how they said it in the audio thing. Anathema. Anathema. Would you have read The Prophecy? I mean, it'd be really hard not to. I would have. She sent your whole family up before you. Right. Like, yeah. Like, how do you know that your part isn't important in it? Like, I don't know. It's part of the ineffable plan. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. She, she treated her whole family good up to that point. Like, and then kudos for her for being, like, super awesome and helping her family in that way. Mm-hmm. Like, she could have totally been like, screw you guys. You guys can do it your own way. But. I thought it was super awkward, though, that she was like, yeah, you're totally going to have sex with this this random guy. And and the world's going to end, but yeah. almost, but not quite. No, I mean, it was the nice and accurate prophecies. Yeah. So they are nice and accurate. Yes, nice meaning accurate. Right. Now I'm trying to find, what's his face, his name? Oh, Shadwell. No, I'm not Shadwell. He's hysterical. No, what's his face? It's his person. Newt? Newt. That's what it was. We should have wrote all the characters. I know. Out. I'm terrible. Like I We did bad. Yeah. Um, but Newt, when he he's like, wait, 
my libido went down because just the thought of an old lady sitting there watching. <laughs> and apparently that did not stop him. And then he was like, hey, can we do it again? She's like, nope, you got a shower. Nope. The prophecy says we only do it once. Bye. And you're going to need a shower and get the plaster out of your head because mm. we're going to, you know. Mm. And she's like, my goodness, you really should have, mm. must have bumped your head. And he goes, uh, actually, that was during, uh, you know. <laughs> Wink. Oh. It was great. I like to think they get married. So, but there isn't a sequel to this book. Hmm. But I think that it wasn't canceled on Wink Netflix. So if you missed that whole debacle, um, there's a big, huge petition going out to get Good Omens canceled off of Netflix. And the hysterical part of the whole thing is that it's a, I don't even know if I want to say it because I don't want them people to understand. They won't listen to this because it's Good Omens. Um, it's an Amazon Prime. That's what I was gonna say. It's not even on Netflix. No, they have. You got to look this up. But they, like, so the Netflix came out and was like, "Sure, sure, we'll cancel Amazon Prime." And then Amazon Prime's like, "Oh, well, if you cancel that, we'll cancel." And it was a Netflix show that they said okay. they'd cancel. So they were like totally having That's fun why with I these dumbasses. Like, looking at you, like, what's going on? Like, it's not on no, Netflix. No, no. But I'm not kidding. There was like a big, huge. I can't remember the not number, but of the of um, petition signed to get Good Omen canceled and not even continuing airing. And they thought it was for Netflix. Let's see. I'm going to Google it right now. A Christian group is trying to get the series canceled. A protest campaign sponsored by a lay Catholic organization, a.k.a. Lame. <laughs> 20,000 signatures? Yeah, yeah. On a petition urging Netflix to cancel the fantasy series. Based on the novel. Like, which it was clear, a book first. Which people. clearly means that they didn't even take the time to watch mm -hmm. the show. They just were like, oh, it's about this? Oh, no. We just need to cancel this. Like, people, if you want to cancel something, at least take a chance to... Oh, and then Amazon um, was like, well, cancer Stranger Things if you cancel good That's what it was, Stranger Things. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Speaking of, they uh, released another teaser trailer recently. Did you see it? For Stranger Things? I still haven't mm -hmm. seen the last one. Okay, after set, after that. after the second season, I was kind of like oh, struggling. It was so good, <laughs> but I, I heard Good Omens might have a second season. But like, where would you go with it? You know what I mean? The good, the exact prophecies of Agnes Nutter. Yeah, the nice and accurate prophecies of like what her through time. Oh, that'd be interesting. I mean, well, sh not her through time per se, but like but go like, back and do a little. So they talked about the 14th century being absolutely horrible. I mean, and Crowley Crowley and Azarafel could be in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting. That would be interesting. But it's like, how do you continue the story from like, uh, you know, like Adam and New and, you know, because it's like their story more or less came to an end. You know what I mean? Like what? Teenager and he gets all pissy. They never said he actually gave up his powers. That's true. He was just like, screw you, dad. Yeah. This is like 11. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even like, you know. Loses his virginity and the house falls into a sinkhole. Yeah. <laughs> I think they could do okay. something with it. They could. I mean, people would either hate it or love it. It's one of those things that's a, a delicate because the book mm -hmm. was so good and the sh show followed the book so closely, so closely that if you're gonna do a spin-off like neil gaiman better be one of the writers yes. producers and directors of it yes. or else there's no point right yeah which uh, i think he was right for i think so yeah it was i mean they even kept the intro mm -hmm. exactly the same the one with the cards moving around and following through and actually when i was watching it because again watched it before i read it i was like this seems like a really weird intro for something <laughs> and then when i read the book i was like Ah, okay. Good good job. I thought it was really cute. <laughs> and then the um Oh, and then uh when they were standing on the wall with when the Adam and Eve part. Oh yeah. And uh Crowley looks over at his air fell and he's like, Didn't you have a flaming sword? And he and he goes, Oh well and he goes, Yeah, it was like blazing like yeah. anything else. <laughs> I was dying. <gasps> I think I had to pull over because, again, it was when I was sitting in the car and I was just, like, crying, laughing. Because it is in the show, but it just sounded – like, I couldn't imagine 
had I read that first before seeing it in the show. Like, it's just, it's yeah. funny. It was very funny. I I thoroughly enjoyed the book. Again, I, I love that, like, very subtle humor. Um, I think it's an underrated literary tool um, that the British take advantage of and us Americans don't always. So um, I definitely appreciate that. Hold on, I'm gonna... And all the characters, even like the minor ones, were just so well fleshed out and like added to the story. Like there was the one gentleman who I can't remember his name, but he was giving directions to all the people who were trying to find the air, air base. Yeah. The, who always like the wrote old to, neighbor. Yeah, who always wrote to the newspaper saying, oh, and on this and this and this and then this. And, like, people don't seem to care about this anymore. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he was, was walking his dog. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was great. I'm like, could you imagine if four people within, like, a 10-minute span came up to you and asked you directions to the same place? I would have been like, oh, hmm. what the? And it's not like, I mean, with the, ex- the kids didn't even ask for directions, but everybody else that did, they were all peculiar. Like, they were all a little odd. Yeah, like it wasn't anybody. It was Norm. I don't, the the whole the first chapter is just perfect. Um, I wanted to see what exactly he said. Uh, oh, eventually Crowley said, "Didn't you have a flaming sword?" And he's like, "Er, uh," said the angel. A guilty expression passed across his face, and then came back and camped there. You did, didn't you? Said Crowley. It flamed like anything. Oh, uh, well. And then it's like, it looked very impressive, I thought. Yeah, well. Lost it, have you? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Not exactly. More. Well. And then it's like, if you must know, I gave it away. <laughs> and then there's the part with, I love all the footnotes. Oh, yeah. And it's like, there's a bunch of footnotes about the flaming sword. And it's like, footnote 25, And the Lord spake unto the angel that guarded the eastern gate, saying, Where is the flaming sword which was given unto thee? (laughs) Footnote 26. And the angel said, I had it here only a moment ago. I must have put it down somewhere. Forgot my own head again. Footnote 27. And the Lord did not ask him again. (laughs) I did like, in the audio part, it did read the footnotes too. I mean, it has to. The footnotes add so much to it. It did. And they read it in the sentence. So if it started out in the sentence, and then you know how it has the little... The little ash- footnote number or whatever. Yeah, it yeah. reads it as the next sentence. Oh. So it goes right in it. And I'm like, oh, is that how you're supposed to be reading footnotes? <laughs> well, it's hard sometimes, because sometimes a footnote happens like in the middle of a sentence. And yeah. it's like, do I stop mid-sentence? He, the uh, audio uh, people did. Oh. Okay, you learn something new every day. Usually I finish the sentence and then read it. Right. No, he did it. That's how they read it anyways. And I enjoyed listening to it that way. And I'm like, oh, well, now I know. And I think. Now I know. Although that one book book we read that was just all footnotes that we didn't finish. The one book we read. Liberated Spirits. Oh, that was fucking rough. Because that had some, that the half the page was was like a history book. Oh, a history book read better than that. Yeah. Because oh. the history book was abridged, at least, usually. Yeah, this that was torturous. But Good Omens was great. The best? It was good. <laughs> Did I say the best or great? No, it's great. You're it's right. It's great. It's great. Like, see, I even went away from what I was saying. I mean, I love Neil Gaiman's books. Graveyard book was, er, uh, yeah, the Graveyard book was good, too. And it's like a version of the Jungle Book, but if it took place in a graveyard kind of thing. Huh. Yeah. Speaking of graveyards, mm-hmm. Hester, fucking demon, and how he killed all the um, telemarketers because he was stuck in the phone. Oh my god! And he and just he like goes, explodes those and poor he kills people. All the, but then, it, but then it brought a lot of good to the world because then people weren't getting interrupted and being during pissed dinner off. and stuff. Yeah. And, was, and it's like so even evil, evil. What did they say? Evil seeds their own demise. Something like that. Something I don't like that. The exact phrase. But I did like, so when Crowley traps him in the phone lines, I was like, I'm That's very ingenious. curious to see how they do that in the show. Because sometimes you read things and you're like, how are they going to like make that make sense? But I thought they did a really good job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if it were me, though, because was it digital? Or was it like a cassette? It was a cassette tape. Because then didn't he say he was going to put the cassette tape into his car and it eventually would turn into? Oh, yeah. Because this was written in the 90s. Yeah. yeah. So why wouldn't you just take the cassette tape out and then just stuck it on a shelf? 
from then leaving it in your I think maybe he was afraid that at some point he would figure out how to escape maybe I don't know, I don't know. or nobody calls him ever or just for the torture of having, having to, to listen to his voice over and over, over and, and over, over again over and it was like over. hi this is Crowley I can't come to the phone right now mm-hmm. uh, leave a message or don't like like, <laughs> I, like I don't know how they did that in the book again I, I'm gonna have to go back and actually read the hard copy but in the audio part that I listened they actually like space it out and then they're like they have is there felt you know answering he's like oh no, no, no. he's like and he sounds like he just woke up and he's like going on I'm like Aziraphale, you can't tell me this is an answering machine. God bless him. <laughs> and I love that he owned a bookstore. I know. I liked how they. Oh, he my, drinks hot cocoa. I liked how they were get. They got so drunk, and then they're like, "In order to have this conversation properly, I need to sober up." And then they're like, "Meh, sobered <laughs> up, snap." Yeah, I wish. I'm we like, could God do that. damn! I wanted people to have that ability. Um, and we'll do a little quick shout out to all of our pat- patrons on Patreon. <laughs> Thank you to our patrons, Angela, Ray, Julie, Mike, and Linda. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You guys rock. <laughs> you help us pretend like, you know, we are professionals. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, so any last thoughts on good omens? Or should I say it was great, great omens? <laughs> I do have one more thing to say, though. Dog. Aww. They're like, you're going to get a hellhound, and his naming will be the most important thing. <laughs> It will be what you know says all about him. He's gonna name him Butch or Hades or Throat Ripper, so, something yeah. epic. And then they're like, and then he's like describing what kind of dog he wants, and you can and he's changing he's, as he's, he's changing running. as he's like <laughs> describing him, and he's like, I want, I don't want a big dog. I want a a dog who will go through holes and you know all that shit. And um, that was my British accent. And then he like the dog almost has like this like crises as he's like who am i <laughs> yeah and then and then at the end he's like i'm a dog because then that's what he named him mm-hmm. he named him dog they're yeah. like well what are you gonna name him dog. dog and then so that's what dog ended up being was just a dog, a dog. Mm-hmm. that's what adam needed and mm-hmm. can i say i'm glad his name was adam and not warlock could you imagine <laughs> having to hear a warlock through the entire book adam is also very fitting and that was, was also funny when the nun was, like, trying to, like, subtly suggest names. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Adam fit for him, too, because Adam from Adam and Eve mm-hmm. was neither good nor evil. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. He just took the apple of knowledge yep. and had to deal with the consequences of that and then make his own way, mm-hmm. which is exactly what child antichrist Adam had to do. Like Child antichrist Adam. <laughs> yes. There could only be one. <laughs> So I thought that was pretty, uh, pretty neat. Good job, Terry and Neil. Bravo. Yes. So for Conscious Corner today, we decided oh, to yeah. uh, swap a funny drinking story. Because that was the best topic that we could come up with. So I have a couple of don't we all? Uh, blacking out drinks. Uh, drinks. Blacking out drinking stories. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one comes from my younger age i will say it wasn't until after i graduated high school before i started drinking so i will give myself a pat on the back for that um so my drinking story is i went to a halloween party at a co-worker's house and at this point i was working in a restaurant so what were you dressed up as do you remember a sex a slutty referee (laughs) okay (laughs) continue Um, oh, the college outfits we wore for Halloween. Anyway. And it wasn't even mine. It was a borrowed one because everybody had some form of like slutty, sexy something. And you just all swapped it the next year. Right, yeah. Because you're broke college kids. And um, as long as your tits and ass are out, who cares? Yeah, no one cares. Yeah. So we went to this Halloween party and I drank everything under the sun. And then I remember the last thing I drank, which is why I cannot drink mojitos anymore, was Bacardi mojitos. Of mojito. Yeah, I can't go anywhere near mo- mojito, so that's definitely off our drink list. Okay. Um, it's it's bad. Anyways, um, another coworker drove me and a few other of us that were drunk went home. Uh, she gets me home, 
I get into my house, which at the time I was living with my mom because I had college and it was a local college. So get inside, pass the F out. The next day, mom was like, okay, I decided to rearrange the garage because my mom loved rearranging shit. My mom too. It's, it drove, I don't rearrange anything now. I'm like, once it's somewhere, it stays there. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, she asked me to rearrange the garage and I was the most hungover I'd ever been in my entire life. So we, so I'm moving shit in the garage. Like first I was like, oh my God, I do not feel good. I do not feel good. And if you've ever been hungover, it's the one where you get like that hot on your inside, like of your body and you just feel lightheaded at the same time. It is like, yeah. Like feverish from the inside out. Oh yeah. And you want to throw up the entire time and just black out. (sighs) So that's exactly what I did. So I was moving stuff and I had my great, great grandmother's China that I was moving. That's old China. It is old China. So I'm carrying this, and it was actually mine, too, which I definitely didn't want to break. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be sick. So I gently set it down, which is probably the only good thing I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Run out to go puke in the grass rather than in the garage. Smart. But I blacked out. Oh, no. By fainting blacked out, not okay. like blacked out drunk. We okay. forget what you did. I fainted or passed out. My I happened to gracefully land on the hood of my brother's car. Okay. Then fall on the concrete. Well, at least you broke your fall. Yes. My mom, who happened to be standing there, saw all this, did not know that I was drunk as shit the night before. Mm -hmm. And she screamed to my brother, call 911, Megan's not waking up. Like, she couldn't wake me up. This later she told me this part, because obviously I was passed the fuck out. She's shaking me and trying to wake me up, and I would not wake up. That is scary, though. <laughs> it was so. So then, at one point, I think my brother was just getting ready to die, hit the send button on nine one one, and I woke up, looked up, my mom sat up, leaned over into the grass, and just puked my guts. <laughs> oh god! Oh god! <laughs> then my mom hit me upside the head and said, "Get your ass back in the bed. What are you hung over?" And I was like, "Yes." And she's like, "Go to bed. I don't even want to look at you the rest of the day." <laughs> Oh God, I could tell you a story about so that, parental so, disappointment. So, so uh, <laughs> my story is not nearly as good as yours, but that is the sort of funny story that I drunk story that just it was more the day after, but it was def- yeah. but I think I was pretty much still drunk the next day. That's the worst when you wake up and you're like, why am I still drunk? Oh yeah, because it's not like cool drunk. It's the nope. It's the like, please let this trip be over drunk. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, but God, this is going to be the worst hangover. So then I really don't want it to end at the same That's time. That's why I like day drinking now because you're done by like <laughs> 2 o'clock. And then like you take a nap, you wake up, you're fucking ready to go. It's like great. Anyway, so my story. <laughs> this too was my younger years. Um, I went to college in New Orleans and the school I oh – it was like really the best thing ever because we would have spring break – where we would get time off, but we'd also get time off for Mardi Gras because the school knew people would not come to class during Mardi Gras. Right. So we would alternate every year. One year we'd have a week off for Mardi Gras and then a four-day spring break. And then the following year we'd have four days off for Mardi Gras and then a week-long spring break. So we basically got just like a couple extra days. Right. I don't remember what it was this year. But first time freshman in college, so not 21, in New Orleans during Mardi Gras, go out and party with all my friends, you know, we go to the parades, you get the beads, and you don't have to flash to get beads. It's very easy to get beads during Mardi Gras. You don't have to show any skin whatsoever. You just got to be a, a person. You just have to be a person at the parade. If you're at Bourbon Street, I that's like enter at your own risk kind of thing. And so we're drinking, we're partying, we're having a great fucking time. It may have been shopping cart day now that I think about it, but... I don't know what shopping cart day is. It was a, a holiday. I'm pretty sure it was started at Tulane by one of the frats, and it was great. It was part of their, like, rush thing. Okay. So the pledges would have to go steal shopping carts, and they would bring it back to, like, 6 a.m., first light. Steal shopping cart, bring it back to the frat house. They line it with the heavy-duty trash bags, fill it with ice, and then just put a bunch of liquor and, like, snacks and because Tulane was uptown, and the parades would would go down St. Charles to downtown. So then you would take your shopping cart full of liquor, and you would just follow the parades downtown drinking. And then once the shopping <laughs> cart was empty, you would just leave it wherever you left it. Oh 
and by the point it was, you were done, it you were down in the French Quarter where Bourbon Street is, where Frenchman Street okay. is, where the parade where all ends, the alcohol is, where all of like the party is. So then by that point you're already downtown and it's like just a fucking rager. So it may have been shopping cart day. I don't remember, but <laughs> I got. Jeez, I need to visit. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. You can't be on a diet when you go either. So I got really drunk and I had so many beads, and it was like. 20 pounds of beads on my neck like I could have taken off my shirt and you wouldn't have even have known because I had so many beads and you know you get all these necklaces is that the only reason why we wouldn't we wouldn't have known Uh, that was so mean yeah they're like bee stings I was kidding (laughs) um so yeah and then you know you have all the beads you put them on you're jumping around you're moving so they're all getting jostled and tangled Get back to my dorm room. It's like really late at night or super early in the morning, depending on how you look at it. I'm drunk. My roommate is not there. I'm by myself. And I'm trying to get the beads off. Oh my God. And I can't get the fucking beads off because I'm they're panicking. all tangling. And so I start panicking. And the more I start panicking, the more tangled they get. And the more tangled they get, the harder they are to get off. And the harder they are to get off, the more I panic. Oh, and I'm freaking out in my dorm room alone super drunk with like 20 pounds of bees on my neck and then all I could focus on the fact was that I was like sweaty and oh. my neck and then my neck hurt because I was sweaty because I was stressed and then my neck hurt because I'm looking for scissors to cut these suckers I, I and then I'm like this is how I die my roommate's gonna find me on the floor strangled from Mardi Gras beads how many beads. people die from being probably by- zero <laughs> I feel like this is a thing that a drunk person could totally do. <laughs> Finally, like, rip them, like, just, like, she hooked them off my neck and, like, just threw the whole tangled mess, like, against the wall. And I think I cried because I was, like, so relieved. And then I just passed out in bed. And then the next day I, like, just threw them all out. I'm like, fuck this. I can't even. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. I survived. So, you know. Um. So, guys, we have a really exciting announcement, if you didn't see it on our social media. Our next episode is going up March 5th, and we are going to be chatting with Dennis E. Taylor, who writes the Bobaverse books. I'm so excited. He, for some bizarre reason, agreed to come back for a second time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why either. It's not – I don't know. I wish I could say we were paying him, but – No, it's better that he just voluntarily – Oh, yeah. This is great. Us. He's yeah. awesome. So we were lucky the books enough. Are, the books oh are God, awesome. The books are great. You got to read them. They're an easy read. So we were lucky enough to chat with him about the first book in the series, We Are Legion, We Are Bob. Uh, that was our fourth episode that aired um, October 17th of 2019. So definitely, definitely check that out. And Because it was a series. That's why we added the second book into our – Yes. Because we loved it so. Yeah. So the second book of the series is For We Are Many. Um, and we're going to be chatting with Dennis about – that book then after that we're gonna dive into uh the witcher series we're gonna do a book from from that um we're gonna so that i can actually have discussions with my husband about it (laughs) yeah uh you know we're gonna delve into some more of that fantasy sci-fi and then we're also gonna pick back up on the lana harvey series we're gonna do the second book of that series and angela roquette um has graciously agreed to chat with us and she has a bartending history so she's going to help us create a drink so i'm really excited i know to and see she, she, and she will be it. drinking as well while yes. on the podcast which is exciting so then we were not the only people yeah drinking so we do have some really exciting guests coming up um and we're really really excited for it yes um, yeah. and if you guys could please rate us especially on itunes that would really help us. yeah rate us hashtag don't hate us um, talk about the show using the hashtag Lit Lush Podcast. We would be eternally grateful. Um, and again, our next episode is going to be going up March 5th, and we're going to be talking about the second book in the Bob of our series for We Are Many. And I am really stoked to see what the Bobs get into this time around. Me too. All right. As we like to say, stay, stay lively, lively with, with your, your libations. libations.